Good morning and welcome back. It's been a while since I picked up this camera. Now, you've obviously been watching the Scotland footage, which for us was a couple of weeks ago. Since then, John and I have gone to Cornwall, done Run to the Sun. We've just come back from Bristol, but I just haven't picked a camera up. But now I am picking it up again. As you can see, I've got someone on the ramp. But I thought I should pick up the camera again and, well, show what's going on. Obviously, my van's not in the workshop. John's van's not in the workshop. Dai's van's not in the workshop. Because they're all done. So, we'll get into them in a little bit. So, we'll leave John to do that. Catch up with him in a bit. But, see when he stood here, Mr. Dynamo. Captain. How are we, sir? Uh, straight in van from the floor. That's all. Perfect. So, we haven't seen you since Scotland. Yeah. How was your Scotland trip, buddy? Driving, driving. No driving. Did you have fun in Scotland in your van? Yeah, man. Amazing. Good, good times. Yeah. Yeah, uh, admittedly, we uh, have already planned to do it again. Next year, yeah. Hopefully, for two weeks. But. All in all, we actually did quite well. I think I was the only one who actually had an issue. And thanks to Dai, I had an alternator. But it was actually a good trip. I do wish I uh, picked the camera up a little bit more. But I was enjoying myself. We all had a great time. Dai, his missus and kids. They all had a great time. We all got a suntan. Yeah. It's actually it a good nice. trip. Mad to think, I like, guess what? Three, four See, weeks ago now? Four weeks now. Yeah. Since then, as I said, Di and John, they went to Cornwall, done Run to the Sun, kind of. Not properly, but they, they went to Cornwall and did that. And we have literally, a couple of days ago, just got back from Volksfest in Bristol, which is a really good show. Actually, we all had a good time. We'll get John's opinion on the whole matter in a little bit. And also what I'm up to. But, when I left, or before I left, I didn't actually show you guys what I've actually done to my van. Because it was about a week's worth of fixing and modifying that I didn't even show. Didn't even pick a camera up. So, because it's the closest, let's have a look at Mr. Dynamo's van. So, I'm not entirely sure what has and hasn't been seen in this van. But... Yeah. He's obviously got that centre pocket bit, the cup holder, stereo's down there, all his gauges are up here. But, this is Mr. Dye's van. Like I said, I can't quite remember what has and hasn't been shown, but... Got his cooker, got his fridge, got his water and stuff under here, his fridge, full-size bed. Underneath there, he has got his two leisure batteries and his sub. Yeah, this thing has done him and the family very well. Oh, obviously, and the whole pop top, which is actually really cool. Mr. John's van. Well, I don't think he's done a wonderful amount since. It's all locked up anyway. But he hasn't done a wonderful amount to this other than what we've already shown. So there's not too much more to show on this. But if I remember rightly, John didn't even open a bonnet around Scotland. And my van. And now please excuse the mess because I haven't actually tidied anything up since Bristol, but. Oh, there you go. There's my Bristol uh, wristband, but. There's a bunch being done on this that I haven't actually shown. First of all, I've got a lowered seat base. Now, I did have the standard seat base in, and we lowered this one, I think it was an inch. And you can, I don't know how well you can see. But, I have got a Chinese diesel heater underneath. And it just about fits. When we put the other seat base in, the seat sort of didn't feel very comfortable. It was sat a little bit too high and it was sat too far over, but we did sort of fettle with it and it now sits perfectly against the door card and the height is perfect. 
Now, like I said, haven't long got back from Bristol, so it is a bit of a mess in here. But obviously, there's my pull-out bed and all my camping stuff underneath it. But John did have to lend me the seats covers out of his bay because for some reason i can't quite remember how all this lot went and i was missing a cushion so that one actually came in very handy that this is actually the cabinet that guy was supposed to have in his van but yeah he didn't use it and i needed something to fit in that bit of space so yeah thanks die i've now stole that got my leisure battery my diesel heater, you can just see. I've got plug sockets. That's because I've now got 240 hookup. Hello. Now, without moving everything out, there's obviously the uh, fuse panel. And then that goes through to that switch up there. I do need to run a or hook up like a actual charger so when i'm connected to 240 it also charges my leisure battery but i think we did that the morning we left for scotland so yeah and then the 240 hookup itself is actually in oh there it is it's actually in there but yeah thank you very much Dave, for doing that it was uh Actually, someone I didn't realize I needed. I'm not too sure if I actually shown this or not, but I've gone back to standard turbo. Now, I did have that uh, manifold. Ow, bouncing out of my head. You can't even see any of it anyway. But I did have that cool manifold that was under there and that big turbo. Oh, and the big red boost pipe that went around over there but there was a blow from the EGR I believe and it was getting too close to Scotland so we just ditched that whole idea and put it all back to standard again and I absolutely love it it's a bit quieter it's no slower I'm probably not going to be putting that turbo and whatnot back on but it was yeah I think one night I had to uh well, stay here because the van wouldn't run. I had to take the whole turbo and manifold. Oh, it's an absolute pain in the arse. But for the sake of Scotland, I've been sort of trying to quiet it down a bit and sort of make it a little bit more uh, enjoyable to drive. We put it back to standard and yeah, I haven't actually looked back. And other than the alternator, I had absolutely no issues at all. In fact, none of us had any issues at all, which was lovely if i'm gonna be honest i think if i'm not mistaken i think we done like 1800 miles i was from here up to blackpool then up to inverness then the whole nc 500 and then back again and on the last day we did go all the way from inverness back to south wales which said was a nine and a half hour drive and with stops and road works and everything else i think it worked out it was like 11 ish that was a long old drive, but no, very impressed with that. That Scotland trip was amazing. I uh, will try and get John to sort of talk about his trip as well. But I just wanted to do a little bit of a catch up. There we go, make sure I lock it. I just wanted to do a little bit of a catch up and show you guys sort of where we were really. And obviously I knew there was a bunch of stuff I didn't actually show you on my van that I did and didn't even pick up a camera for. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the footage. Like I said, sorry I didn't pick up a camera anymore. I uh, do wish I did a little bit more filming, but it is what it is. We were enjoying our little holiday. Also, a friend of mine, Harry, he's just bought that red van by there. Just fell over that dip van. Just bought that van, he's uh, a lad I work with. And he started watching a bunch of my videos and he said, I really want a van. Here you go, buddy. So hopefully I'll try and get him on camera soon. Anyway, I'm going to go in, make a coffee. I'll pick a camera up in a bit when uh, we can have a word with John. So, yeah, see you tomorrow. Well, before I get into what this van is all about, 
I do kind of want to show you this. This is what a bad top ball joint looks like. What I do want to show you is this van. Now this van did come in as a donor. Did have a 2.5 TDI in it, which I have already taken out. Right there. Absolutely sweet as a nut, that engine. But I do need to, or have, taken out the gear linkage, taken out the gear stick on the inside, and there's a few other bits and bobs. Because it's going in that van, the blue one. Now that's a guy called Josh. I know he watches the videos. But he actually gave us some advice on the whole Scotland trip. And yeah, thank you very much for that. But oh, I'm actually taking your new engine out. Now he's currently got a 1.9 in that one. And he did come here. I think a couple of the bolts with a manifold have snapped and whatnot. And he did say he really wanted cruise control. But can't because he had the 1.9. Now hopefully. I can get this video done in time before he gets the van back, but Josh, you can have that. A cruise control, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is my actual cruise control out of that van. But you said you wanted to have cruise control, and now was a good opportunity, seeing your engine was uh, as poorly as it is, to do the conversion. There you go, you can have that cruise control. That's yours. But I just got a few more bits and bobs I need to pull out of here for the conversion. I have got literally everything else, the clutch line and uh, power steering lines and brackets and all the bits and bobs that I need, that John needs for the conversion. I've got a few more little bits and bobs to do and then, well, it'll be time to start pulling other stuff out of this before this van unfortunately go anyway i'm gonna get a few more bits and bobs done on this and i'll pick your camera up in a minute so wish me luck so let's try and catch him while he's in a good mood before he starts crying again hello mr john how are we well, thank you I haven't seen you in a while not on camera no so how was scotland that was brilliant we had more time Bit more time would have been nicer, wouldn't it? Yeah, would have been a lot nicer. We did do the whole trip in seven days. Seven days. Like I said, yeah, uh, seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Was a bit of a rush, but. Lucky we had fast plans. Yeah. It was a good old trip, though. That was good, though, Would you? Would you do it again? No. See, this is what happens. He gets in a little mood. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it again today. Just go and move and give off haggis. Oh, while well, John's over there dealing with a customer, I've taken the clocks out and I also need the loom for it. Now, I've already taken the loom out for the actual engine. Now, I just need to take this loom out. Now, as you can see, I've got the majority of it off. But that wire oh, have i just run down the wrong wire hang on hang a banger Ta -da! there is clocks loom for the clocks i'll tell you what what a nightmare messing around with all this lot was you just have to basically look for a wire and then you've got to trace until you find where it goes and then undo it and then trace it all the way back and be careful you're not getting the little ears stuck on anything as you pull it out but the engine loom that came out lovely so did the clocks loom so that's now done so i've got the clocks the clock loom took the pedal box out um, gear stick and linkage, clutch line, power steering pipes, well it's all over it, 
pedal box, gear stick, linkage, power steering lines. Uh, I'm gonna carry on pulling wires out and when John's done with customers, oh, and get some bolts for the, he asked me for them yesterday. When John's done with his uh, customer, we'll go talk to him again. So we'll see you in a minute. Well, after that, didn't really pick the camera up again. I got a few bits and bobs done on that yellow van. And as you can see in the background, John's got a different van on his ramp. So we just ended up getting a bit of work done. But we had a bit of food left over from Bristol and to save it going to waste. We had a little bit of a uh, barbecue in the garage. Leave us with pork. But yeah, stuck it in a couple of buns with some mayonnaise. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, I'm going to get myself gone. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you very much for putting out of our dumbass. And as always, take it easy.